Bob Dylan, I think we can all agree as a songwriter, doesn't fit into a neat box. He started life really being a folk singer, Woody Guthrie type, you know, following in those steps. And then R&B and the blues and rock, Christian music, and then back to rock. And he, I think, just glides among different genres. And he does the same thing with his artwork. From Mondo Scripto, which is almost Talmudic in its detailed calligraphy, must have taken forever to write out his lyrics and then to create works of art that accompany those lyrics uh, to his more contemporary painting. And much of his painting is defies chronology. Even he said that. He doesn't really quite remember when or where he made some of these works of art. They're not of a particular time or place. They're kind of America. Some of it you see classic sign for a motel, cafe, the kind of signs that you see when you take a road trip across the U.S. You can't quite remember which state you're in. That's what he really captures. And I think that's why we love Bob Dylan. He is timeless. I'm Jordana Pomeroy, director of the Patricia and Philip Frost Art Museum, FIU. I'm thrilled to have this exhibition retrospectrum, Bob Dylan. It is the debut of his artwork in the USA. He is obviously a lover of words. He's crafted words his whole life and thought about meaning. It doesn't really mean anything. Retrospectrum certainly sounds like a retrospective, but I think it really goes to his adoration for I don't know, turning over words in his mind and in his mouth, and it just probably sounded right, and that's what it means. I think a lot of people, they didn't know that Bob Dylan is also a visual artist, but those who really follow Bob Dylan know him as a visual artist, obviously a poet, a lyricist, a singer, and a filmmaker as well. So he's really a very much a Renaissance man. We have paintings from the 90s and then all the way through the pandemic, he was making a new series, Deep Focus, based on film stills. And those are in our grand galleries. And it's really quite, Extraordinary to see them all cheek by jowl, to see them one next to the other, because it's like a film into itself. It feels like one of these 19th century experiences of a film that sort of surrounds you. And they are detailed, they are meticulous, they're fun to think about, try to guess where the film still is taken from. You dive right into his series Mondo Scripto. The writing is spidery and calligraphic, and then his draftsmanship is beautiful. So the images that accompany the lyrics don't necessarily illustrate the lyrics. So it demands making a story on your own between what is the sort of bridge between the image and the lyrics. And then as you go upstairs on the second floor, you're treated to quite a large number of works that are really about his travels. I mean, at that point, he's traveling widely through Asia. So we have a series that's based in Asia and Europe. And we see some of his works in metal, which I think in some ways are the most surprising and delightful because they are, I think of them as like watch mechanics, you know, the sort of, if you opened up the back of a watch, they're very detailed. I like to think he scavenges for some of the metal pieces that he puts in the work, and it's like a big puzzle. And then if you come into our grand galleries, you see what I think of as Americana, the iconic signs that are really only associated with the United States, as if you're on a, you know, a road trip from the East Coast to the West Coast. This is what you see. And then we move into his more contemporary work. He's working like crazy. I mean, these works, Deep Focus, are based on film stills, and these are the works that he's been really producing while, I'm assuming, kind of quietly, you know, sequestered as we've all been during the pandemic. So you really see a lot of different work. 
I think he's somebody who probably doesn't sleep a lot. That's all I can say is that hours in his day, must, his day must just look a lot different. I imagine he just wakes up and just starts to create something new. I think he has a very rich Rolodex in his mind of artwork and especially by iconic American artists like Edward Hopper, the Ashcan School, and you know, the Ashcan School and Bob Dylan. And he, you know, a lot of artists don't want to talk about where they're, who were their great influences. I, I think sometimes artists find that a painful subject. You know, they're crafting their own path, right? They're carving their own place. It's not that they don't like to pay homage, but they are finding their own voice. And I think his voice is unique, but definitely American in a certain sense. And that's where you see the Edward Hopper and the Ashcan School, I think most clearly. I think his work is very relatable. He doesn't like to be boxed in, but what he offers is his songwriting and now his visual art. And in a sense, it's a piece of himself. And so he can kind of better understand this. Really, this icon, this, this genius of the 20th and 21st centuries.